Monica Mackley is going to come in just a moment. In just a moment. She is a butterfly evangelist, caterpillar wrangler, master gardener, weekend rancher, mother, wife, daughter, friend. Her husband said she was a bourbon wrangler. Was that a urban, urban. <laughs> She makes her living as a media marketing executive, usually working at the computer, writing for the Texas Butterfly Ranch, reporting on urban nature for the Rivard Report, and also hatching plans as a consultant at the Arsenal Group. She would rather be outside, but tonight she is leading off. Please welcome Monica Mackley! very excited to be in your company. Thank you so much for having me. I want to just say a word about insects. Insects are kind of creepy, but butterflies are cool. Butterflies, everybody loves butterflies. Is there anybody in here that doesn't love butterflies? Come on. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to talk a little bit about butterflies. This is where it all started for me on a crisp April, crisp October day in 2007. I stepped out of the kayak walked between these pecan trees and butterflies erupted all around me. It was like orange snow. Hundreds, probably thousands of these butterflies wafting all around me. It was pretty magical. That was the day I became a butterfly evangelist. Since that time, I've pretty much devoted my spare time, which is not that much, to reading, writing, and talking about butterflies. <clears throat> I raise caterpillars in my kitchen, I raise host plants in my yard, and I write about it at the Texas Butterfly Ranch blog. I guess it's fair to say that I've been completely seduced specifically by these butterflies, the monarch, Danaeus plexippus, the king of the butterflies, and the state butterfly of Texas. With their four-inch black and orange wingspan and their dramatic sauntering flight pattern, it's really hard not to be enchanted by them. And they're very easy to recognize. They have the most beautiful metamorphosis. The females lay three to four hundred of these gorgeous cream-colored eggs on the underside of milkweed leaves, and about four days later, a teeny little butterfly hatches and eats the eggshell as its first convenient meal. <clears throat> That's when they start eating machines. <laughs> these guys eat nonstop for about two weeks, 200 times their body weight, and it's so much fun to watch them, their acrobatic contortions, their little filaments feeling the universe. When it's time to turn into a chrysalis, they wander from the plant, turn upside down in a J shape, and spin this gorgeous green chrysalis with gold flecks. Scientists believe the gold flecks come from milkweed toxins that they eat, and that's the expression of them. When it's time to turn into a butterfly, these guys turn opaque, then clear, and you can see the orange and black colorations, and then voila, they turn into a butterfly. What's really amazing about these guys, only insect to migrate 2,500 miles from Mexico to Canada and back. They wake up in the spring in Mexico, mate, lay their eggs, and successive generations continue the journey north all the way to Canada, and they find their way back in the spring, in the fall. This is Michoacan at 10,000 feet. Bob and I made the trip there last March, and 450 million butterflies are clustered in these trees. They wait there in the daytime, the sun warms their bodies, and at some point, at some moment, they bust off the trees in what's called a butterfly explosion. Wow. This is the most amazing sight, awesome in the true sense of the word. It really pro <laughs> provokes glee and giggles and slack jaw, but don't leave your mouth open, you might get a butterfly. <laughs> When they leave the tree, one day they start flying north, usually in March, and thank God they come through Texas, coming and going. We are so lucky to be in San Antonio in the Texas funnel, where our hill country streams, on the central flyway where the hill country streams offer a respite, roosting, milkweed, nectar, and mating possibilities. The, each generation thereafter goes about three weeks. They fly all the way to Canada. These successive generations make it to Canada. And then in August, in the late summer, the Methuselah generation of monarch butterflies is born. These guys live nine months, and they fly all the way from Canada to Mexico, 2,500 to 3,000 miles. We really don't know how they find their way. Scientists believe that monarchs have these GPS-like devices in their antenna. 
that guide them and make them sense when to turn south. And because their migration takes them to Michoacan at the end of October, in co co coinciding with Day of the Dead, the Mexican people believe monarchs embody the souls of their ancestors. Shockingly, this was not figured out until 1975. They didn't really know about the multiple generations. This woman, Kathy Aguado, and her partner, Ken Brueger, worked with scientists to discover the recent spot near Pazcuaro in 1975. Huh. Tagging programs have been in place since the 50s. The most, the most long-running one is Monarch Watch, that's the one we participate in, where citizen scientists are enlisted to net, tag, record data, and release butterflies. Bob and I have tagged about 1,400 butterflies since 2007. The tags have been recovered in the mutual con forest, and we've had 23 of our tags recovered. The native people there are rewarded with a $5 bounty per tag and incentivized to recover these from the dead butterflies. I was really hoping when we saw these tags that one of my tags would be here, but it didn't happen. The monarch migration is at risk while the monarch butterfly is not an endangered species. Illegal logging in Mexico, urban sprawl, uh, ramp rampant development, genetically modified organisms that are doing away with native milkweed and the drought and climate change all threaten the migration. Scientists are very concerned. What you can do is plant milkweed. Any kind of milkweed would do, Asclepia species. This is tropical milkweed. It's widely available, easy to grow. It's not native. It's fine for home gardens, but not for wildscapes. The milky sap secreted by milkweed protects monarchs from predators and makes them taste bad and also accounts for their coloration, as evidenced by the famous barfing blue jay photo. <laughs> Dr. Fred, Dr. Lincoln Brower did an experiment where he fed uh, blue jays monarchs and they retched shortly thereafter. The orange and black coloration is supposed to be a warning sign, don't eat me, but this guy just didn't listen. <laughs> so, would the world tip off its axis if the monarch migration ceased to exist? No, but it surely would be a less magical, interesting place. The monarchs really are incredibly interesting and encompass so many things we care about. Conservation, science, migration, politics. I don't pretend to be objective. I'm a butterfly evangelist. When I see blue sky riding monarchs, Creatures that weigh a gram flying thousands of miles home to a place they've never been. I can't help but smile, smile and be amazed. And now, I bet you can't either. Thank you. Aww.